Let's shoot some moving time lapses. Don't you mean hyperlapse? No. It's a moving hyperlapse. time lapse. No, time lapse. It's a, a hyperlapse. It's a freaking hyperlapse, dude. It's a moving hyperlapse. Whatever, hyperlapse. Let's just do this. What's up guys? Hope you guys are doing good. My name is Dr. Filet. Welcome back to another video. Now I know there's a lot of videos on the internet about how to shoot a hyperlapse, but I have a couple secrets I want to share with you guys that I don't think a lot of people talk about on how to shoot hyperlapses. They might be out of date right now. I don't know how many people still do them, but I love hyperlapses myself. I think they're a really cool addition to any sort of video project. This video is about on the ground hyperlapses, by the way, none of these drone hyperlapses. If you do want to see a video on drone hyperlapses, I can do one. I've done them before. Here's an example. Just let me know in the comment section below. So first let's run through the gear you'll need. Of course, a camera. You're gonna need a camera, anyone. Any camera could work. You can even shoot hyperlapses on your phone and you're not gonna need a tripod. Preferably you have a tripod or a monopod. I like to use a monopod myself. It gives a lot more freedom in the movement. You can shoot them a lot faster. But if you're in a run again situation, you can do them without a tripod. What I would say is leave your ball head loose so you have a lot of freedom and the flexibility of where you move the camera. It's nice to have that tripod for stability, but you wanna be able to quickly move that camera and change the angle of it. You can keep that camera centered. So step one, you're gonna wanna set up your settings. The first settings you're going to want to make sure you have is you're going to want to put it on single shooting mode because you don't want to overshoot. You want to make sure that your shooting is consistent every step. You're taking only one shot. If you take two, then it's going to kind of slow down, speed up, kind of thing like that because there's going to be more photos in certain areas. If I'm on a DSLR, I shoot on aperture priority. This helps me keep my exposure consistent. So I'll set all my settings and I'll just make it so the shutter speed will change constantly. The exposure will always be the same. If you're shooting on manual, it'll be up and down kind of thing because the light changes all the time, but the aperture priority will keep it consistent. Last tip I'll give you is to shoot on 16 by 9 depending on where you're going to post your video if you're posting on youtube might as well shoot 16 by 9 in camera because that just saves you all that cropping you have to do in post and the thing is you're going to be cropping so many photos it's going to take you so much time so it, you might as well do it in camera it saves you a lot of time so i like to shoot 16 by 9 now once you know what you're going to shoot for a hyperlapse buildings are super nice to shoot usually you want to have a single focus point i'm going to be shooting my house as an example i'm going to be coming down the street shooting my house you're going to want to choose one specific spot on the house whether you're shooting a, a clock tower that might be the clock itself whether you're shooting a tree that might be you know the center of the tree you're gonna want to choose one of those focal points and once you set up the grid on your camera one tip i forgot to give you is make sure you're putting the grid on the camera the, the three by three grid you don't want to choose a corner or a line preferably a corner because it's a lot more precise and you're gonna want to line those things up that makes sure that that thing is centered the whole time so every photo you take you want to make sure that that focal point you chose you can't change it is going to be lined up with one with one of those corners on that three by three grid it's kind of hard to see here but as you can see the corner left bottom left corner i'm lining up the Acura car right here, the left tail light. So I'm gonna just make sure I keep that while I'm shooting this whole time. You're gonna wanna choose a start area and an end area. It's nice to just go down a street, any sort of street. Bonus tip for you guys, make sure you have a clear line of where you're gonna be walking. It's best to be walking in a straight line when you're shooting these, not moving side to side. So just make sure there's a clear path. For example, here I'm on the road, I'm making sure there's no snow banks that I'll have to go over or anything like that. And you just wanna make sure you're, you're keeping that focal point on one of the corners. And you're gonna be taking one step, take a photo, one step, take a photo readjusting every single time again to make sure that that corner is lined up and just keep doing that remember 24 frames a second is what you'll probably be doing if you take 24 photos you have one second of your hyperlapse depending on how much time you need in the hyperlapse you're gonna have to shoot more photos in the end things usually look better the more photos you take also if you want the clouds to be moving a lot quicker the slower you're gonna have to take it because you're gonna have to let those clouds move so you might take a photo wait a minute take another step wait a minute a minute's a bit long i would say maybe 10 seconds kind of thing to make it even slower and, and make sure you're not wasting your time you can even just make your steps smaller. So it's a lot of variables. The variable of how many steps you take, how many photos you take, and how much time you wait in between photos. This is all to be played with. Me, myself, I just like to take a photo, take half a step forward, take another photo, half a step forward. Consistently, it usually works out pretty well. So once you're done, throw all those photos into a folder on your desktop. First step you're gonna wanna do, probably import in the Lightroom or somewhere where you can see the photos, and you wanna delete any photos that are out of sequence. If you accidentally take a, two photos or you accidentally take a photo that you know you were aiming down or it doesn't look very good, you want to cut those photos out because when you are importing your photos into a sequence, it's going to take all those photos in that numbered order that you took them and it's going to be really weird because all one, all of a sudden, one photo is going to be like all the way to the right. So you want to make sure you get rid of those photos. Put them into your editing software, whatever editing software you use, and you want to make your adjustments. You can do this in the video section of it, but I like to do my adjustments in the photo part of this because I have a lot more control. All these photos are, are raw photos, depending on if you took raw or JPEG photos. You have a lot more choice in changing the edits. Once you compress it into a video file, you can't change the 
the you can't change the colors as much because it is converted into a, a low a low bit rate a low codec so here i would just cut i would crop edit all my photos make sure that there's none out of sequence once i do that just export all your photos one tip make sure you're exporting them at a pretty low file size maybe 50 percent quality if you're exporting through lightroom the reason for this is that these are all raw photo size photos when you're editing video the video frames are, are super low quality because there's so many of if you think of a cinema camera they are shooting raw video this means that those raw photos are coming in and that's why their file sizes are so big so one recommendation is export your photos small because you're putting all those photos into a single sequence your size is going to be huge going to be 5,000 pixels by like 3,000 pixels going to be ginormous if you don't export it at a lower file size play around with the resolution sizes again i don't know exactly what we're talking about maybe on screen i'll show you but 50 i think is a good way to go now final step here you're going to want to import this into premiere pro after effects whatever software you use get all those photos in one folder and when you're importing it click the image sequence checkbox this will take all those images in numbered order and it'll turn them all into a sequence that'll go into premiere pro usually at 24 frames a second but you have to check properties of what the frame rate is you can change it by going and right clicking and saying interpret footage and then choosing what the frame rate is going to be 24 is usually what you want to go with finally i like to add warp stabilizer because usually again it's going to be shaky not everyone is perfect with their photos so a warp stabilizer is super nice to add it'll give it a nice smooth look kind of like you're on a, on a on a trolley just sliding across but it's a time lapse it's super cool warp stabilizer 20 percent smoothness 50 percent whatever whatever works and makes it smooth finally export that video now you have that hyperlapse that you can throw on any video you want you don't even have to export it if you're just going to directly import all those photos into this the project that you're working on and need that hyperlapse for and yeah that's pretty much it so uh do you guys use hyperlapses do you think they're outdated let me know in the comments section below and let me know if you learn anything from this video i'd like to know if there's any tips that were different than most of the hyperlapse videos as always my name is dax brulee thanks for watching this video gently 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 tap that like button if you enjoyed this video subscribe i got new videos come out every single week every single week hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every single time i drop a new video without further ado creators keep creating peace